Okay, so if you watch my previous video, I will put a link of that, that video at the end of this video. But if you watched my last video, I talked about how evolution, the current scientific evidence that evolution is pro is not real, okay? Um, but, um, so let's just, but just for argument's sake, let's say for sure evolution is not real, okay? These primates up, um, these primates that were walking upright, these different kinds of primates that were hunters, and they were hunting with sticks, okay? They were hunting with sharp sticks, they were hunting animals okay they were hunting um large large prey okay they are really they got really good adapting at hunting okay they did not evolve though they did, their bodies didn't change all right they're really good at hunting animals with the, with um sharpened sticks that that is what they were doing they were not tying they were not making arrowheads though they weren't tying arrowheads on sticks and they were not making bow and arrows okay <laughs> all right they the 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 most technological weapons they ever had was just making sharp sticks, okay? And the other weapons that they were making were, um, or other tools they had, was they were just using sharp rocks to, um, to slice their meat a little bit, okay? That's what the evidence shows. They were not doing all this crazy stuff like the humans were doing, okay? They did not have, they did not advance any tools other than sharpening, uh, sticks, okay? To hunt their animals, to hunt their meat. And they did later did become um, cannibals too when they couldn't find any. Okay. Um, anyway, my point is, what is the purpose of God making these things? Okay. And why aren't they here now? What is the purpose? Why did God make these primates to walk upright and they were good at hunting? All right. Why did God make them? I'm gonna get into the reason why God made these Neanderthals and these Homo erectus and the hope um, all the, um, these other primates that are walking upright. Why did He make these and and where did they go? Why aren't they here now? Why did they become extinct? And what can we learn from this? This is a really important, really, really important message. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk about that in this video. Let's admit it. The first one is, if Neanderthals and hominids would cause such a stir for creationism through Darwinian evolution, why would God create such beings? That's a very good question. It's a question we address both in our book, Who is Adam? and in my book, Navigating Genesis. And uh, interestingly, the source of our answer uh, comes from Ian Tattersall. Uh, one of the world's top physical anthropologists and a committed atheist, but he's very friendly when he's talking to us. And uh, he was the one that said, you know, when we look at all these bipedal primates that preceded human beings, there's a very interesting pattern. Number one, we have no evidence for any of them existing in Australia, North America, or South America. And what he was pointing out, Ian Tattersall, is that Africa, especially sub-Saharan Af Africa, is where we have the greatest number of species finds for these bipedal primates. And then next would be Asia, and then third would be Europe. Uh, but we don't see any undisputed in North America and nothing in South America or Australia. He says, what we notice is that when humans began to spread out from the one region into all the places of the world, when they moved into North America and South America and Australia, they wiped out so many large bird and mammal species that they were not able to get out, get beyond the Stone Age. And they were not able to develop a large population. They literally wiped out the very species of bird and mammals that they needed to launch a sustained civilization and a large population. And he was pointing out to us that when humans entered Australia, they quickly wiped out 94% of all the large body bird and mammal species that existed there, including the animals that were crucial for being able to launch civilization. Uh, animals uh, like uh, cows that could uh, pull plows, uh, camels, uh, horses, these creatures were wiped out. Same thing happened in North and South America. 
Uh, the animals that remained the longest were the mastodons, but they were wiped out. Uh, but what he pointed out is in sub-Sahara Africa, when humans arrived there, the extinction rate was only 4.5%. And likewise, when you look at uh, Asia and uh, Europe, the extinction rates uh, were all in the area of a 10 at most 30%. And so civilization was able to be launched and accelerated and thrived in Africa, Europe and Asia, but not in North and South America uh, and in Australia. And as Ian had pointed out, you know, this actually seems to fit your model of reasons to believe. If there's a God behind all of this, he would know that we humans are such skillful predators and uh, that we would be in danger of wiping out the very animals we needed to launch and sustain civilization. And of course, from our biblical perspective, we'd also add that humans fell in the Garden of Eden. They rebelled against God. They became selfish. God commanded us, manage the resources of the planet for your benefit and the benefit of all life. But because we rebelled against God, we became selfish. And all we thought about was our benefit, not the benefit of the rest of life. And we weren't even looking long term in terms of our benefit. It was all short term. That's what selfishness does. You take a short term perspective. And uh, because of that, God knew uh, in advance, of course, that we would sin and this would be a problem for us. And so he created a sequence of these bipedal primates basically to train large bodied bird and mammal species. When you see large animals on two legs with weapons in their hands, run. Keep in mind, I mentioned this in my book, Hidden Treasures in the Book of Job. God designed birds and mammals to relate to us humans, to serve and please us humans, and to come to us uh, for that relationship. So the natural tendency of these wild birds and mammals is to come to us and relate to us. Now, we see examples of that. Uh, when uh, Europeans began to settle in uh, North America, uh, they ran into these passenger pigeons. And passenger pigeons had a very strong affinity for human beings, such a strong affinity that when humans were hunting them, they would not fly away. They literally flew towards the hunters and wound up being wiped out. In the space of a few decades, the passenger pigeons were dr driven to total extinction. To me, that's grievous because just think if we had saved the passenger pigeon, we'd have this wonderful bird species that really loved hanging around us and serving and pleasing us. That's gone. And that's because they were not trained uh, to avoid uh, predators on two legs with weapons in their hands. And uh, likewise, we came close to doing the same thing with the whales, because whales are another species that have a very strong affinity for human beings. And so we noticed in the whaling days, the whales had come towards the whaling ships rather than running away from them. But in Africa, Asia, and Europe, uh, the terrestrial animals there, over the space of several million years, were trained by these bipedal primates, run away when you see tall bipedals with weapons in their hands, and therefore they survived in sufficient numbers that they could be domesticated by humans and be able to use by humans to launch and sustain agriculture and advance civilization, whereas that didn't happen in North and South America and Australia until Europeans brought them the animals uh, that they had uh, wiped out. All right, I'm gonna stop and go over what he's talking about. Okay, this this stuff was discovered not by Hugh Ross. Okay, he's an astrophysicist. This anthropologist who is not even, a, he's an atheist, okay. He said this is what he's discovering, what he discovered, okay. and. He Ross is just giving you the information that he discovered. So he said that it, there's a direct correlation between the primates and the extinction and humans. Okay. So in these countries and the Africas and the European countries, okay, in Asia, where the primates were, okay, they there is no there's very low extinction rates of of animals. Where there weren't primates, where there weren't primates, there were a lot high extinction. Okay, when humans came, 
to these high, to these human, the, so what he's trying to say is these primates were walking upright with sticks in their hands, and that was training the animals to be scared of these upright walking pe people looking things with, with sticks in their hands. So, okay, They're, the, the animals were literally being trained to be scared of us. They weren't originally supposed to be that way, okay? A God knew that we were going to be, we have, we're going to be in our falls. God knew before he made it, even the earth, he knew, okay? I, God knew the whole future, okay? And he had it set up like this on purpose to give us a chance, okay? To save us. Okay, but he knew that he had. He knew he knew that we were gonna fall, and they were basically going to be evil and be selfish and kill off all these animals. Okay, the very animals that we needed to survive. And this pro this evidence proves that. Okay, where these primates were, there's low extinctions of animals. Okay, these animals right here were all scared of these primates. And though, so when humans came, they ran away from the humans and they, the, there was no, the low, very low extinction. Okay. And where there are no primates that hide, the humans almost killed the animals off immediately. Okay. And these animals were detrimental into us making society and make, making us live. Okay. They're, they're detrimental in our survival because, um, and because these and these three countries right here, the Americas and Australia, because we killed off all the animals that we needed, we were stuck in the Stone Age for a really long time. Okay, because those animals that we needed to help plow fields and make stuff and be fruitful, okay, uh, they we killed them off right away. Okay, so it, they got stuck in the Stone Age for a really long time. These countries, these areas right here, these continents. Uh, where the animals didn't die right away, that humans um, uh, had, they got better tools right away. They were able to live longer right away. They were not stuck in the oh, Stone Age fat. They were not stuck in the Stone Age. Okay, um, they they went they got through that faster because they didn't kill off the very animals they needed to pro to progress to progress. Okay, um, so this anthropologist. This anthropologist is so funny because he doesn't believe this atheist. He doesn't believe God did this. He's just saying natural selection is, is kind of did this, even though that's funny because I, I think it's funny that natural selection can see into the future. <laughs> no. Okay. It's because God knew that this was going to happen, so he's training the other animals to be scared of humans, and he was using these primates to do this. Okay. Because animals... And oh, I wanted to bring up this is exactly where Noah's flood is. Okay, read the Bible. It lists the places where Noah's flood is. It's this these areas right here where the primates were, where they where humans came out of. The primates came out. The the places where the X's were just so happened to be the places that the, that the Noah's flood did not flood. Okay, all right, because there was no humans on there yet. There was no reason to flood the earth, okay? Not yet. There was no reason to do it. So God just flooded this area. There were not polar bears on Noah's Ark, okay? There weren't polar bears and all this weird stuff on Noah's Ark like you see in the cartoons, all right? Not every single animal in the whole world was on Noah's Ark, all right? Um, if we read the Bible, it uses the term edit, okay? It just means the whole land, the whole land. And it lists the land, okay? And it's written like that on purpose, but I'm not going to get into that right now. There's a reason why there's that confusion. There's a debate over that. Did he know us? Did God flood the whole earth or just this area? There's a reason why it's written like that, but I'll get into that later. It's all about the book of Revelations, okay? Um, um, so I, I, that's really important. Uh, the theology, I'm trying to combine the science and the theology to get you guys to learn – to get you guys um, really getting into the Bible because it's very important, okay? So when the humans came, they almost, when the humans came and the animals weren't scared of them, they almost went, the, the, the animals went extinct and therefore the humans almost went extinct too, okay? And these areas, they did well because the primates were there scaring the animals off before they came, okay? Uh, and the passenger pigeon is a very sad story, okay? Because the, 
these passenger pigeons, like animals are, are naturally supposed to come to us, like those whales, okay? And we killed them off almost right away because they were not running away from us. That's what that passenger pigeon thing was about, okay? Um, but in our fallen nature, God knew that we are going to fall. So we had to have a backup plan so we wouldn't kill ourselves right off because we killed all the animals. We're very selfish and we don't think, we don't think, okay? Um, um, I know that everyone's just going to say, well, aren't, weren't there other predators that were hunting these things down? Why would it just be us that was killing all these extinct animals? This is, there are other predators, obviously, that were killing animals, okay? But this is why we killed them off worse, okay? Yes, we were killing them for food, like other animals, lions and stuff. Other animals, lions and tigers and bears were killing them for food too. But the difference is when other animals hunt animals, like when lions hunt deer or whatever, natural predators, um, hunt other natural predators, okay, they always go for the weakest one, okay? They always go for the weak one in the back. And that doesn't hi that 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 doesn't damage the that herd's hierarchy. It doesn't mess them up too much because that animal was already weak and dying anyway. So it's uh, it was now more natural for them to die first. Okay, the, the humans do the exact opposite, and we still do this. And they were doing this back then too. We always go for the king. We always go for the biggest animal, the smartest animal, because it's a pride thing. Like ha ha ha. It, it's not just for food right? It's like, oh, you, you know, uh, you're, you look cooler with your clan members or even now do hunters go for the little fish or the little lion or the little giraffe? They go for the big one, right? That messes up the an whole animal and uh, the whole animal's hierarchy. It messes them up and makes them go extinct faster. Okay. Because it's a pride. We hunt for pride and to, to gloat, not just for food. And that literally made these animals go extinct because they were doing that that back then too. It was like a pride thing to go for the king, not for the weak one, right? Because we weren't just doing it for food. We're doing it to make ourselves feel cool, right? Just like now, just like hunters do now. This made these all these animals, these mastodons and stuff go extinct faster because even the primates weren't doing that. The primates were not make, hunting these animals to extinction, okay? The primates would go for the weak ones too. They had the bodies that that they our bodies from the, are different from the primates. They ran, they ran, they ran very. They ran, they they got heat exhaustion faster. They only ran in quick quick sprints and they got tired really faster. So of course they went for the weak one, okay? Just like lions and stuff do. They can run really fast. Cheetahs and lions can run really fast, but not for a long period of time. Humans can run for a long period of time, okay, without getting too tired, okay. So what happened was we always go for the king. We always go for the, the, the king of the, the herd, all right, the big one, which was, and we kept doing that. We kept going for the, the top ones. And so the animals, their, their um, natural, their natural, uh, their, their natural, natural hierarchy uh, and the, the older ones that were supposed to be training the younger ones, they died first. So, so their, their sufficiency went down. Okay, does that make sense? The sufficiency of the older generations teaching the younger generations went down because we kept killing the older ones, the smarter ones, the faster ones, the better ones. Okay, so these animals went extinct because we kept killing all the teachers, right? We kept killing all the leaders of the pack. So guess what? There were no leaders anymore. And so the pack slowly started dying out. Their, their natural hierarchy d became less and less... Um, Less and less adaptive, okay, and less and less uh, able to uh, live longer because we kept going for the oldest ones, uh, the strongest and smartest ones. We kept killing off the smartest ones, the bigger ones, the ones that they knew how to survive longer. And so the little ones didn't know how to survive, so they died right away. And they all, all these animals went extinct, okay? That's why when we hunt, we kill the animals faster compared to when the lions and stuff hunted, okay? That's, and that's, we're still doing that now. We're still doing that now. It's so evil, and because we because we're selfish and evil, and we keep and he's saying that they uh, in North America, South America, and Australia, we literally killed off the very animals that they needed to progress. 
because they needed those animals to plow fields and to make houses and all that stuff. And those human beings in North and South America and Australia were stuck in the Stone Age for so much longer compared to the human beings in the European and Africa Africa areas because we hunted down the very animals that we needed. But in those areas in Africa and the Africa, Asia Minor, all those areas, they they were able to to invent things do and progress and make civilization faster because of the the, the animals weren't extinct. Okay? They we didn't kill they didn't kill them all off because they were already trained by the primates to be scared of us. Does that make sense? Okay. Alright, I think that's very sad. Okay, and, and you should learn a lesson in this. And God knew that we we're going to do this. Okay, so that's why he made the primates. To scare the animals. To teach the animals. To give the animals a chance to be scared of us. Okay. So they could survive. So we could survive. Alright? Alright, I think that's all very sad. and But it's a lesson that you should learn. Um, Alright, can you guess from these mastodons that, would, that became extinct because we hunted them down? That's how they became extinct can you guess how these primates became extinct now? Can you guess? I think we killed them. <laughs> okay. Because uh, this, is not, this is so not funny. Okay. Uh, God literally sent these things to scare the animals to help us. Because we needed those animals. Right? Because we're stupid. We, we would have just killed them all like we did in the Americas and Australia. These primates. God literally made these primates. To help us to scare the animals off okay and we and the scientific evidence shows that uh the primates came first that is this is true okay they were hunting and there was just different races of primates that's why they're all they're all, they all come in different sizes but they didn't evolve that way okay they didn't slowly get bigger they were all just different races of primates up upright walking primates okay um anyway so all of a sudden, the humans are, they come out of nowhere. God made humans. Okay, okay. But anyway, the humans come out of nowhere and there's an overlap between the Neanderthals. The scientific evidence shows the overlap between the Neanderthals and the humans. Okay. Um, I think it's 10,000 years. So they are living together for 10,000 years. But, but they, but they keep in mind that these Neander, these Neanderthals, these primates, all together are around for millions of years. And in 10,000 years, they all became extinct. Okay? Just like the mastodons and all these other animals were here for millions of years. And just in the uh, period of time, they all became extinct. Okay? The mastodons for sure made the... I mean, the humans for sure made the mastodons extinct. That's proven. I think the humans killed off all the all these... Um, all these primates okay not only in physical battle because this is i have proof of this too um listen so when humans came okay not only were they physically fighting with these things sometimes okay but they are kicking them out of their natural habitat okay just like we do now okay and so they started starving to death okay and that's when they they the neanderthals didn't start off as cannibals okay they were hunter gatherers and then they they were hunter gatherers, okay, and they they it's weird that scientists say it's weird they started coming becoming cannibals. Um, they became cannibals because we made them st starting to starve to death, okay. We made them starve to death because we started k killing them physically, and they we started kicking them out of their ha natural habitat. And it's so interesting too because all of a sudden. They look at some of these skulls from the Neanderthals, okay, and they just died of natural causes. And all of a sudden, <laughs> when humans appear, the bones show all these traumatic, uh, horrible deaths. Like they are fighting with something, okay? Like something was bashing them with their brains in. I'm not kidding. Their skull, like they're, they're, they, they died of a lot of trauma, okay? So you tell me that these things were all of a sudden started fighting with fighting with like the saber tooth tigers and all this stuff or whatever you're thinking okay no it's the humans they were fighting with these things and they killed them off okay because these things were used to being the top of the food chain okay and then they weren't anymore and they didn't know how to fight with humans even though they were stronger 
They could not run very fast. They could not run very long and fast like humans could, and they were not nearly as smart. Humans' tools were so much more advanced than their tools, okay? So they killed them off very fast. The Neanderthals and the primates became extinct. The Neanderthals definitely became extinct when humans got to the scene, just like the Mastodons did, okay? That's why they these things became extinct. All right, they showed trauma. All of a sudden, when the humans hit the scene, all of a sudden there was all these bones of them there of trauma of violence. Okay, basically is what I'm saying. Okay, we kill them. What's the message in that? God sent these things to help us, and we kill them. <laughs> okay, yeah, get that. As a whole, always hunt down the very things that help them. They always hunt and kill the very things that are help helping them, and that is such a message of what happened when Jesus came such a Jesus message. When Jesus came, we killed that guy in three years. Okay? He, when he started teaching and started healing people and helping people, oh no, we didn't like that. We killed him right away. The very guy who, who came to help and save us, we killed. Just like these animals. Just like these animals were, were put on earth to help and save us, we killed them. Just like we're doing that now. That's how we did, it's the same thing we did with Jesus. He had, came, literally came to come and help and save us, and we killed him. And you're still doing that. Okay, and we still are killing the king. Do you guys not get that correlation? We are killing, we have killed, and are still killing the very thing that has sent here to help us. Do you guys get that message from God about these animals? The book of Job, the reason why it talks about all these animals is you are, we are supposed to be learning from them. Okay, learning from our mistakes. And what's the theology in this, in our, um, in our walk with, in faith? Okay, and our this connection with the gospel of nature and the gospel of Jesus. Okay, uh, we are still killing the king, and trust me, it is gonna go back. If you are killing the king, you you are gonna be you're going to be extinct. Let me tell you. Okay, okay, um, and and the whole this is such a lesson. God has such a lesson with this story. Okay, when you tell people about Jesus, people are gonna hate you. Okay, they're gonna hate you. They're gonna try to hunt you down like this. Okay, and they're gonna try to kill you down. And you have to try to stay strong and not let, not let it happen. Okay, they're gonna try to beat you down. And Jesus said, "Remember, remember when they hate you? They hated me, hated me first. Okay, you and and the book of this is such a this is a lesson in the book of Revelations. In the book of Revelations, it talks about how when the 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 Christ, the people who believe in Jesus are going to keep going down and down. The population is going to go down, and the evil is going to keep going up. And eventually, there's going to be zero Christians left, almost. And then that's when the end of the world happens, because no one is there helping people anymore to do, understand what real good is and what how to save themselves really. Okay, in the Book of Revelations, this is all going to happen again. This is why it says in the time of Noah. It's going to be like the time of Noah. There's so much meaning in that. If you read the book of Revelations, it says it's going to be like the time of Noah again. Because we uh, we hunted down the very things that were trying to kill, help us, loved us and helped us, and tried to make us prosper. That's what we're, that's, in, in, that's, it's spiritually we're going to be doing that. People are going to be hunting and killing down and put, bashing down people who believe in Jesus. And they, they don't realize that they're the very people that are there to save them. Do you guys get that connection? I got that right away. I thought that was interesting. Okay. There's a very huge lesson to learn in this. If you are a Christian, you have to keep trying to convert people. Keep them going and keep being fruitful. And making more Christians to get this, to get people away from this uh, hell and stuff like that. Okay. It's so important to make... To try to keep this going as much as po- long as possible before we just it, God just stops it all and He just is like, okay, I'm done. It's so serious and this is gonna happen. All right, please think about this stuff, guys. All right, thank you.